After my latest adventures in aluminium, I was curious about the dimensional accuracy you can expect from a print and see. The plan is to mill out this shape that's a 35 by 35 millimeter square with a 20 by 20 square in the inside. But first we have to remove Excalibur. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. <sighs> Long story short, the tool length offset got deleted when I had to reset the machine because I ran into an end stop. Therefore, the C0 wasn't at the top of the workpiece anymore, it was somewhere in the middle. I don't want to grab with anything because I mar up the surface of the bit. So I guess I just wiggle it back and forth. Well... God... Break free! Oh. Come on. It feels like it's getting loose. Yeah! I am by no means an expert, nor is my equipment, but I want to give you honest feedback what the stock machine is capable of, so you can form yourself an opinion. The surface looks quite good. The, the bottom of the hole can be improved, but the side walls, I'm quite happy with the side walls. Okay, so with the stock setup, everything 3D printed, we get 35.1, point 35.2, 19.55, 19.6. Okay, so now the program runs a second time as a spring pass to see if we have some flex. 35.1. Thirty-five point fourteen, nineteen point eight, nineteen point eight. Let's do a second spring pass and check the values again. Thousand millimeters per minute. As you can clearly see, there was still some uncut material which got removed with this tool path. We are spot on. We are also. 0.25 millimeter oversized, 0.26, 0 0.24. We are at 19.83, 19.85. So the inside pocket is still a little bit undersized. So I think we will rerun the inside pocket again, but this time we will leave a stock to leave on the bottom so it only engages on the side. Okay, so the final result with two spring passes is on the y-axis. We are spot on, I would say. On the x-axis, we are at 35.02, which is almost spot on. And the pocket here should be 20 by 20. 19.9 by 19.94 or 6 
So the pocket is a little bit undersized, but everything else came out really nice. After this adventure, I had a deep dive into tool paths on semi-rigid machines. And I have to say, there is quite some room for improvement on my side. There is feed optimization, smoothing, ramping and spring passes, which all helps with chip load and deflection. Since my initial plan was to build a mostly printed CNC, I have to say, for my needs, this machine is more than accurate enough. But with optimized tool paths, you should be able to hold 0.05 millimeter tolerances without much fuss. 